Ladies and gentlemen, this is Jeff Richardson coming to you from a mysterious place in the far off ether. Are you ready for Good Idea? With Aiden Kinsella and Bradley Berklish. Is that right? Got it. I got Got it it in one. Heck yeah. Nailed it. Good Good idea. idea. (laughs) We're competent people. We promise. (laughs) Yeah, we are. Good idea is a brain trust your brain can trust. It is a comedy podcast where we find creative, actionable solutions to your real life problems. I am Aiden Kinsella. I'm Bradley Berklich. Anyone else? Anyone else here? You can. Is there someone? Jeff? Hey, my name's Jeff. And this is Good Idea. Hey guys, welcome to the show. Good to have you here. Uh, Jeff, why don't you introduce yourself? Uh, what are you all about? Hey, I, uh, I'm i a podcaster. I have three podcasts and uh, I have two dogs and a cat and a hedgehog and I, I write poems, novels, uh, barely anything's published, but uh, yeah, I'm on my grind. Oh, hell yeah. You got to be on that grind. (laughs) Kevin Hart loves that grind. He'd be proud of you. Heck yeah. So we got a show to do with some prompts in it. And we have all the prompts. Are you guys ready? I'm I'm ready. Very ready. Bradley, can you pick us a prompt to start with? Ooh, it's my turn. Okay. The second prompt on the list is awful. I just want everyone in this call to know that, so I'm not picking it. Should we? I'm going to have to read that out loud now just so... Okay, uh, so I guess so we are doing it. Um, we are going to do it. Is truck nuts are overplayed and dead? How is the market for truck ovaries? Uh, <laughs> and I want everyone to know that's bad. It says how to market for truck ovaries. Okay. Um, and it's and it's by AJ uh, AJ Generis, who is a friend of ours. He was on the show pretty recently, <laughs> and I really like this prompt. So, Bradley, I'm vetoing your veto, and we're going to do it. <laughs> okay. Um, I think with truck ovaries, you got to take into account the fact that we have to convince people that a product no one can see is a good product to buy. That it's a purely aesthetic product and no one can see it. Is it like under the hood? I mean... I think it should be under the exhaust manifold. That's where I would think it would go. But if you look at like Shut Up and Drive, which is I think a Rihanna song... <laughs> That song says something about handling what's under her hood. You know, like if you think that you can handle what's under my hood, baby, you got the keys. Shut up and drive. I think Rihanna was talking oh. about her business pitch for truck ovaries. Okay, okay. So she's considering like the hood analogous to like a labial hood. Yeah, like the labial hood, okay. clearly, which is on the car, the truck hood, and then it covers up the area where the ovaries are contained within. But Purely aesthetic products that can't be seen are generally hard to uh, hard to sell. Like if mm-hmm. I was to sell mm-hmm. um, air and say like this is makeup air, and you just brush it on and you look just like you're covered in air, like that might be difficult to to sell. Or like mm-hmm. sugar free sugar, which is not an aesthetic product, but a, I mean, if you think a, about it, the the whole point of ovaries is to gestate uh, the the necessary materials for life. And a car yes. doesn't traditionally procreate, so. But then again, we never thought we'd have truck nuts, and that's a whole industry. <laughs> that's well, yeah, so, truck nuts. <laughs> Bradley, go ahead. Wh- why don't we? Why are we? Why does this have to be a fully aesthetic product? That's a very good like, question. I, I think. I think we put it under the hood. It's like this, you know, this like fun little contraption. You don't know what it does, but like once a month, every month. Uh, a matchbox car uh, <laughs> covered in blood comes out of the tailpipe. <laughs> and I think that's just that's just what it does. And you have shouldn't to sort it be of live like, with it. Shouldn't it be like the building blocks of the car, like factory pieces? That would be one thing. I, I think because <laughs> technically a car was never created, right? It didn't even get to the blastocyst stage of car. Well, it hits like the, the big... There's like another thing from another car, which is just the big car emitter, <laughs> and it makes the car larger. I don't exactly know. This is all a little, you know. This is all theoretical. It's too scientific for me. The science hasn't quite uh, made it there yet. It's a thought experiment. Nobody's caught up to my thought trains. <laughs> so here's what I'm thinking, right? 
Men have reproductive rights. Women want reproductive rights. Who's to say cars don't want reproductive rights? Good point. I think regardless of what baby comes out of the car, the car should have the ability to have that child. You have to, once you get it installed, um, and once you actually find out what it does, then if you don't want a Matchbox car every month, you have to pay to put a tiny pill in your car to stop it from happening. That's it. You keep them coming back. It's like the the printer ribbon. Yep. <laughs> the printer ribbon of automotive procreation. <laughs> now, with the Matchbox car, instead of blood, can it be an oil slick? So there's a very real road hazard involved, which forces people to like, and if your car oil slicks the middle of the road at some random time when it goes into labor while you're driving and some car slips on that and like, that's your insurance bill that's going to go up. You know, so you have to buy that pill. It's like a speed racer villain hack. Mm, I don't know. I, I feel like we're blaming the female automobile for a natural, you know, discharge. Yes, we are. But that's exactly what that's exactly how you make profit, Jeff. Hmm. We're going to continue profiting off this because the people have to keep buying this pill because we're blaming the female car for a natural discharge. Oh, OK. See, I thought it had more to do with like hormonal changes and uh and uh you know of course preventing uh gestation there's science this it's i agree but you know it's all very there's something now bradley for you to assume that a matchbox car would come out every month is assuming that this car is getting laid every month that it's a very sexy car well but believe i think or... there would definitely i think more often than not it would just be that oily discharge and you well, wouldn't even get the, the you only have to buy the pill if the cars are having sex so we need to motivate people to get their cars to fuck aiden i like to think that like the egg of the car mm -hmm. is a matchbox car oh okay and so the matchbox car when it gets mixed with the truck nut sperm yeah uh -huh. oh, okay Okay. Um, it you becomes just, a transformer, and that's just, how Autobots are born. So it's almost like a metaphorical car egg. <laughs> yeah, there's a metaphor there somewhere. I'd agree with that. We got, you know. Check this out, guys. I have a marketing strategy in which we punish truck nuts, right? We say, oh, gosh, these truck nuts, they're dangerous, right? Like, can you imagine all these trucks out there on a the road without the ability to sexually procreate, and yet they have these giant automotive testicles filling them with all sorts of hormones and 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 fluids and it's dangerous it's mm -hmm. dangerous and it puts the cars at biggest at bigger risk for axle cancer which is just really not good it's rough um it's rough and s what i think we need to do is we need to start on top of our truck ovaries business a truck a truck nuts castration business mm -hmm. um, they can all sing mm -hmm, higher mm-hmm Yes, the, the car's horn gets like... <laughs> right yeah. now, there's no standards for how to remove truck nuts safely and uh, and effectively. We could standardize that process. Put in regulations. Mm -hmm. And then, if we can figure out how to cut just enough of the testicle off to like make a certain amount of hormones going in, we can get ho car horns to start harmonizing by cha controlling their pitch changes. And then we can have like a whole bunch of funny meme videos. Oh, we could even market it with new models of vehicles like the Hyundai Soprano. <laughs> 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 the Ford Castrati. <laughs> I think this is good. Do you guys do you guys think we should move on? I think we should move on, but I we do, solved the problem. I would very much like to purchase a Mazda Alto if we could before the podcast is over. God's weakness. <laughs> okay, this is from um this is I think from Keegan. It has to be from Keegan. I do not remember receiving this prompt, but it's very funny. It's it's from Brad. There's a little there's a couple oh, Bradley of them on put there that from there. Brad. <laughs> I, I also don't understand your labeling system, so I put them anywhere. <laughs> okay, that's fair. Did you put in yes. all of these? There's a lot here. <laughs> I had a lot of thoughts today. <laughs> I think combine. We already did combine all the silverware into one extremely efficient utensil, Bradley. We did. What did we make? Yeah, that's one we've done before. It was like a <laughs> potato masher with a straw down the middle, so you could mash up your food and suck on it <laughs> while you're mashing up the food to consume it all with one utensil. Oh, oh I remember God. that now. Have you guys patented that yet? Actually, no. I mean, yes, we have. Don't go pat. Don't go try to patent that. We already have it. TM, 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 TM. <laughs> um, ooh, ooh, wait. Smoothie spoon. Ooh. Okay, tell me more. That's the straw that goes down into the... Because it's not really a spoon, but it's a masher, but like, oh. you know. 
I remember that. You get potato smoothie from it. That was my idea. That's an excellent idea. Well, that's fantastic. That's just called mashed potatoes, <laughs> but you know. Um, All right. That's, I'm good. glad we have a name for it now. So we're going to do God's weakness. Bradley put this on here, and I don't know if he was thinking like God's kryptonite. But I'm thinking more like, what is God's guilty pleasure? What's God's <laughs> favorite sin to do? I think God gets home at the end of the day and he's just like, you know, I know I'm a perfect, immortal, omnipotent. There's another omni, omni, omni benevolent. Omni benevolent. Omni- he can't be all three, but you know. It, you know, but. This so accounts down- for that. This sin accounts for that. So he's like omni benevolent or whatever, but he like sits down after like a really rough fucking day. And, like, an angel was, like, I don't know, doing some annoying shit all day because they'd be fucking annoying. And and God is just like, you know what? I'm going to I'm gonna treat myself to a little bit a little bit of wrath. Oh, and yeah. he, he floods all of Earth. <laughs> <laughs> every time he every time he has a rough day, his yeah. Urafail rips a fat cloud in his face. And he's like, you know what? I'm done. I'm done. I'm done with this benevolence thing. And and then climate change starts. There goes fucking Gamora. (laughs) Azrael, you're on my last nerve. (laughs) But sir, you can't destroy more humans. You said you wouldn't. I'll justify it later. (laughs) Put in a fucking book. We'll be fine with it. This proves that humans are not the cause of climate change. Clearly it's God. Clearly it's God God treating himself to a little bit of wrath. (laughs) <laughs> he's up and he's like mm, you know what I'm gonna treat myself too and he like he like like swirls it around a little glass and it's like a red liquid and he swallows it and then just like forces out his hands and like a pillar of salt erupts in like the middle of I don't know what's uh, Aleppo or whatever like you know I think it'd be really good if he like started putting pillars of salt in places where people already have really high sodium intakes <laughs> In a person? Yeah. He's just going to increase the level of hypertension slowly. The irony of dying by salt, but it not being because of your extremely high sodium intake if you have sodium issues. So what I love about this is on a God level time scale, he's just kind of snapping his fingers and killing a bunch of people. But on our human time scale, it's going so slowly. It's like a revenge is a dish best served cold Mm -hmm. and like a whole bunch of us are just getting fat and slow and losing our eyesight and body parts are falling off and he's like corn syrup (laughs) (laughs) i love that so much you know what speaking of corn syrup surge sounds a lot like one of the seven deadly sins like the drink surge (laughs) I'm going to treat even... myself to a little bit of Surge today. What is Surge? Mm, sinful. It's like a lemon-lime drink, right? Yeah. I gotta Google this now. Pride, wrath, Surge, <laughs> lust. Is it a competitor to 7-Up? What's... Oh, I Jesus. think it's a competitor to Mountain Dew. It's like yeah. a super highly caffeinated Mountain Dew, and it's like drinking toxic waste, basically. Um... And I think that that is another one of God's favorite sins, is Surge. <laughs> Surge Movement Facebook group. There's a number here which says, keep calling 1-800-GET-COKE. Hmm. Which Peculiar. may refer to cocaine, because I, it seems odd to me that they would recommend a competing soda. Uh, you know what? I bet yeah. Coke, like, makes Surge. Yeah, probably. That's That's no fun. Good joke, Jeff. Hey, what about... What about if God isn't a dick and like, but his weakness is like a particular type of goddess, you know, like how my weakness is like sporty ladies, like for God, it'd be like, I don't know, horses or. I don't want to, I don't want to think that God is just into horses. That's uncomfortable. God is like a basic horse chick. You believe God is a Clydesdale. (gasps) Bradley just (laughs) sent a meme into our uh, group chat here, which makes me wonder whether or not he's fully participating in the podcast. (laughs) But it's... uh, I don't see it. I haven't seen it yet. (laughs) This is on the Surge Facebook group. Oh, okay. (laughs) It's a picture of a little kid with a can of Surge next to him. And then next to him, a picture of an old, like, large, balding man with also a can of Surge next to him in the same house. And it says, hashtag 20-year challenge, real winner. The real winner is Surge. Because look at that guy. (laughs) It got him. (laughs) 
<laughs> that can, same can. Even though it looks taller and different. Same one. Um, Jeez. I, I think I think the idea of God being just really into the, the like horses as a as a goddess or not even a goddess, but just like a mortal a mortal pleasure he takes in horses. God goes home at the end of the day and his bedroom's just fucking covered in black beauty pictures. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus walks in and he's like Dad d- are those your my my little ponies? <laughs> That's way worse. <laughs> so what is this group chat that I can't find? It's oh, it's just us on the um on it's the Google Hangouts. Phone. Why can't I see it? I don't know. Is this bullshit? One last uh one last mellow yellow also sounds kind of like a drug. Yeah, yep. totally. You got cocaine. You oh, got wow. mellow yellow. You got God really like surge and mellow yellow and all of these just like mortal mortal trappings that he's created to destroy the human race that he can consume in mass quantities because he is perfect with a capital P. <laughs> so he does he does like to sin a little bit at the end of the day, especially after Aziraphale rips a fat cloud in his face. What if God was a shitty teenager? <laughs> 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 Fuck you, dad, but you're dad, so I'm dad. Aww. We're both dad. <laughs> uh, have you guys seen my two dads and then <laughs> dads is the only word that's capitalized? No, I've not. That was, that's just like the TV show of my two dads. <laughs> uh, is it like God, the Holy Spirit, and Jesus just like being annoyed at each other constantly, but it's all like God's very into dude? Holy Spirits. It's another gluttony like drinking. Oh, like, yeah. 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 This bit is dying. If God had a sex horse, he'd call it Holy Spirit. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, that's that's solid. Um I want to talk about uh, a prompt from AJ Generis once again who sent us the great truck over his prompt. Um and this prompt we talked about on the most recent episode of his podcast, at least the most recent one I was on. Uh, episode 29 you should definitely check that out it was a party it was really really funny the prompt aj has sent me uh on the good idea twitter was a uh, it's a me a uh, britney bitch <laughs> so bradley jeff what do you guys think <laughs> what do you guys think the context for <laughs> it's a me a uh, britney bitch might be mario gets into like really big 2000s pop and he gets home and he's just like you know what is it you know what? it's it's me Britney, bitch. And he just, like, changes completely. It's like a different dude. Luigi's just like, Mario, I've never seen you like this before. <laughs> Are you okay? Wow, we need to have an intervention. <laughs> Was Britney a Spice Girl? No. <laughs> no, but she might as well have been. Okay, okay, that's fair. She was our Spice Girl. <laughs> even if she, a Spice Girl of the people. You know, even if she wasn't, she basically was. She was basically a Spice Girl. I mean, one could say she was even the spiritual forebear of the Spice Girls. <laughs> she was Methy Spice. Allegedly. I can't even know enough about the Spice Girls <laughs> to... I think he's suggesting Britney was on meth and not just experiencing oh. a psychotic break. <laughs> was that what that was? She was like super rude to me one day and I was like, Britney, what's up? And she was like, I'm not on meth. <laughs> but now that you mentioned that she might have been on meth, that makes way more sense. I think it's more likely that Mario went into one of those whoop, 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 whoop pipes and it sent him back in time into earth where people are primate descended and not reptilian wait, and wait. he uh stumbled across Brittany at a hollywood party and they switched bodies and she went back and fought bowser and she was much better at it i i take that it is i was i was not trying to just guess on britney spears by the way i've just looked this up britney spears has used meth i believe she was addicted to meth <laughs> She, now, I'm not trying like, to make fun of addiction because addiction isn't funny, but I was just I was just commenting on a, a part of a part of her history. The, literally the only thing I could I could <laughs> pull on Britney Spears, which I think is really sad. I think that's probably history. It is. I mean, it's uh, there's a lot about it online on different on different definitely reputable sources. So <laughs> Britney has used meth.com unbiased parentheses. <laughs> My Britney Spears ex meth fan fiction um, <laughs> on <laughs> Wattpad. Uh, she gazed longingly into the methamphetamines and <laughs> I've been up for seven days. Look at my pussy. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what that was. 
I can't stop! This is much better than the Invincibility Star! Mario's a very good mother, though. I think it's important to, to stress that. <laughs> oh, that's true. Mario was a good mommy. Who is Mario's son? Okay. <laughs> is it baby Mario? Because I don't understand this timeline. It was Yoshi. Those pipes that's are fucked up, worse. guys. <laughs> It's all over the place. Who made those things? The baby comes out of the pipe sometimes. You gotta think at that point, right? What if Mario's people weren't descended from reptiles at all, but rather cars from our universe? Whoa, dude. Cars 4. <laughs> Mario fucks. <laughs> cars 4. Mario fucks. Soundtrack by Britney Spears. You know, like the, the the Office episode where he pulls up listening to definitely not Britney Spears where Michael does this and it's he says, it's Gaga. me, Britney bitch. Uh, it's Br- or when he's just like, it's Britney bitch. It's that, but it's Mario rides up on Yoshi and he's like, it's me, uh, Britney bitch. And then he like jumps up and like hits a coin. Um, and then he like does some shrooms. And then Man. it's an Old Spice commercial. It's an Old Spice Girls commercial. <laughs> <laughs> Man, this timeline's <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> you look at me then back at your girl then back at me then back at your girl then back at me i'm on yoshi we're riding across a beach <laughs> i fucking love old spice <laughs> was that my left bicep no that was my uh, abdominals jesus oh man if you wear old spice like me you can smell just like britney bitch Am I allowed to say that on this? Oh, run it again. Okay, uh, under under your name, Aiden Kinsella, we have fuck sleep. What if we just didn't? Exclamation point instead of question mark. So, like, it's more enforcing. Yeah, well, that was just something that I think I said out loud. Uh, because, honestly, fuck sleep, though. I like it. I think it's good. Jeff, what do you think? Well, it is one of my favorite activities. But I think it's important to point out that this prompt ha- you drop the word all and the idea is what if we all just didn't sleep that is true you did drop that so um, not just me jeff because i'm like fuck it no i like to sleep but if it was a public health reason like if we needed everybody to not sleep like to fight global warming for example <laughs> Everyone out in the streets with pitchforks. We should be spending our nights when we're not working during the day to destroy the environment. We should be spending (laughs) our nights to undo what we like to like go out to the pond. and We're up all night putting up solar panels on (laughs) on City Hall and shit. Next to the pond that we filled with toxic waste to fix the problem. Maybe? Mm -hmm. Will that do anything? Ten years of meth (laughs) and the world was saved. (laughs) Ten years of meth. Some Mario, some Britney Spears. How the world was saved in the mid-2000s. And by 2000s, I mean 21st century. We waited a little too long. This movie sounds way better than 10 years of slow. <laughs> Late 2010s, early 2020s. That's when the world was saved. We all smoked a whole bunch of meth, time played, a whole lot of, <laughs> played a whole lot of Mario, and listened to a lot of Britney Spears. Oh, and shit, you know what? what if... What if Mario becomes a good uh, code word for meth? I don't think Dude. there are enough good code words for meth. I can't think of any way to say meth without acknowledging that it's meth. <laughs> like, there's no... I don't know that meth has any secret street names. Yeah, there's ice. There's... I've uh, not heard that. I've heard crystal, but I don't crystal. think that that's not... But crystal's clearly meth, and ice could easily be confused for diamonds. So okay. we need some new... We need a new term. You're right. Yeah. You're absolutely right. Guys, hey, I'm going to uh, go to my basement and play some Mario after school. You guys want to come with? Yeah. Yeah. I haven't played Mario in like three hours, dude. I will totally play some fucking Mario. Can I suck your dick? I mean, is that on the table? Because I will do it. It's definitely on the table, and I will give you some extra Mario if you do that. Please <laughs> come join me. You're not like Luigi, are you? You have to tell me if you're Luigi or else it's entrapment. Yeah, dude. You have to tell us if you're Luigi. <laughs> hey, 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 Luigi's hey, hey, shut up. Everybody, hey, everybody, shut up. I need to play Mario right now. I'm going to jump extra high today. Guys, guys, guys. I think Bowser is on to us. I think we should move. We got to get the war- the warp star. That's Kirby. Fuck. We got to get out of here. Fucking Kirby's in on it. Bowser. Kirby's in on it. Wario. Everyone's in on it. Peach. Oh, dude, Peach is in on it, it. It's Metroid's girlfriend. Run. Run. Hey, guys, I made this sculpture out on the front lawn. It's like... 
It's a giant Yoshi. Dude. Fucking awesome, You man. built it out of grass, dude. That's so epic. How did uh -huh. you... Oh, the wind knocked it down. Oh, <laughs> man. Hey, you guys want to go play some more Mario? I was just about to say, dude. Let me get my spoon. Bradley, can you tell I... us about your meth fork? I think you've talked about it before, but... Oh. <laughs> yeah. In in my home, um, there's a fork. His uh, house used to be a speakeasy. My house used to be a speakeasy. We don't even know what this is, like, from. It was, like, in the wall. We, like, redid our house, and there was a fork in the wall. And it was, like, really fucking bent, and my my dad found it, and he seems to believe it was used for some sort of drug paraphernalia. It's, like, bent the fuck up. Like, like it's, like, it's really messed up, like, in a way that, like, you would, like, hold a drug with it. I don't exactly know, but my dad's, like... Your dad played a lot of Mario in high school, and I think that's how he knows. Mm -hmm. My dad played a lot of Luigi. Oh, that's true. Yeah, he did play <laughs> so, a lot of Luigi. His dad was total narc. Mm -hmm. I really like this new s system of, uh, of drugs. Of crystal meth we came up with. The new crystal meth system. Mm -hmm. Hey, you guys, are, are you on the uh, the metric system? Nah, dude, we're on the new crystal metric system. Princess Peach is opium. The metric system. The metric system. <laughs> we couldn't get the metric system past Americans before, but we think we have a good idea. <laughs> dude, dude, I know we were going to play Mario after school, but none of us have ever tried Toad before. <laughs> And you'd think it would be mushrooms, but it's actually not. It's why is it's, it not um, mushrooms? It's cigarettes. Oh, he's so tame. Yeah, Toad's a cute little boy. He's not gonna be that hard. He's not gonna actually. No, you know what? I think Toad probably might be shrooms. It's funny because I just imagine like just doing Toad. Do Toad, dude. Here, light him up. Pop him in your fucking mouth. If you take, you know, if you take the cap off his head, <laughs> there's um, there's a vaporizer in there. You know how it's like a perfectly straight cylindrical pillar. Toad's <laughs> extremely small. You can vape right out of him. Oh, man. Hey, Jeff, do you want to pick another prompt? Yeah, man. Right after I pop this bob bomb. Oh, dude. Pop some bob. Hey, toss me one. That was your brain. It's your brain on bob bomb. This is your brain. And then it's just <laughs> obliterated brain matter. <laughs> yeah, it's just like super fucked up. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's just real. Like, it's not a cartoon anymore. It's just like a real grisly scene. It's it's euphemism for crime stuff. It's Mario euphemisms for crime things. And that one is for pipe bombs. <laughs> nice. Did I did I tell you about, um real quick, my, my high school English teacher, you know Lubliner, Aiden, right? Yes. He worked at a, a school district in uh, Los Angeles. And someone, uh, parents of a kid who received a bad grade... Attempted a Molotov cocktail to school. Um, but instead of, like, putting it in a glass bottle, they put it in, like, a can. Okay. So instead of breaking on impact, it just sort of sat there and torched the front door. I'm imagining, like, a four loco can that they tried to light on fire with, like, a little string sticking out of the top. And, like, it's just spritzing fire the way, like, if you drop a can on the ground, it just shoots out, like, little spritzes of soda really, really fast. But it's so small. And there's, like, black marks on the door, but they're entirely wipe off a little. It's pretty much that, yes. <laughs> it's pretty much that. Um, gotta love Four Locos. Hey, one last thing. I think the best crime Mario one is is Wario's, um, is if we're gonna go do Wario, which is when we start an international Jewish conspiracy. That's what Wario is? There's a really distracting foot on your side. <laughs> That's fair, yeah. Hey, Kyle, your foot is really distracting. We have a we have a live in guest here, and by live in I mean That's he awesome. lives on campus with me, and he's staying to hang out and listen to the episode as we record. Is Kyle there? Kyle's there. He also said hi. Oh, he said shh, so I wouldn't tell you, but yeah, he's here. I should have known. I think I can see his jacket. Yeah, his jacket is maybe in the frame. I don't know. I have a lot of jackets. Okay, uh -huh. it might be one of your a lot of jackets. As long as we're talking about Aiden's room, I see a, a Keurig machine covered up with with Febreze and lotion. And uh, all my roommates, just just like a slippery Keurig machine, <laughs> it's a very slippery, very good smelling Keurig machine, mm -hmm. very disinfected, very disinfected. I'm probably gonna have to take that joke about the Wario Jewish conspiracy out because it wasn't meant to be hurtful, but it could be hurtful, and I don't want to, I don't want that to happen. Aiden is half of a Jewish person. I am so mad that you insinuated Wario as part of the national Jewish conspiracy. We have not let him okay, into our but, ranks. Okay, it, you know what, Bradley. <laughs> I wasn't actually trying to insinuate that Jew the Jews have all the money, but, War I, but think that the, 
Wario has like a lot of money. He's known for being greedy and having a lot of money. And he has some of the physical features also that fit this like really harmful Jewish stereotype. And I made a joke about it because I thought it would be funny and it fit in with our metric system. But I think that at the end of the day, maybe it's not worth having it in there. Or maybe I'll keep it in there and I'll just leave this explanation in so I can clarify. I think more than anything, it's just kind of strange that the Japanese would uh, have any sort of characters that play on American racial stereotypes. I know, but it's, and even if it wasn't intentional, like that, that's what Wario like totally is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I mean, the Mario brothers are not Japanese. I mean, they're from, they were created in Japan, but they're Italian. Sure. Yes. Yes. Very, very uh, uh, unique characters. Not at all. (laughs) containing Italian. Oh, are we talking serious. about how they don't contain any Italian stereotypes? Hey, Keegan asks, uh, what are maid services? <laughs> it's okay, Jeff. We can make fun of white people. <laughs> Non-marginalized white people, at least. Mm-hmm. That's fine. What did Keegan ask? Oh, what are maid services missing nowadays, and how can we improve them? I mean, back in my day, all the maid services, they were wearing tearaways. And this has fallen out of favor. Uh, when you had a maid come what? over. Tearaways? Tearaways. Yeah, tearaway clothes. The the maid outfit that people are really missing is none of the maids were like those like Victorian, like black and white, whatever those things were, like the petticoat. Sh- I don't exactly know what this thing is, but you know what I'm talking about. They like carry a feather duster. The hyper stereotypical maid. So you're saying what you're saying what what hospitality is missing nowadays in our modern context is more sexualization of maids yes because back in the day that's what they always did i mean Mm -hmm. you can take evidence from the movie american pie where the strippers come and one of them is dressed as a maid Mm -hmm. um very sexy or the movie clue or the movie clue yeah and those are both really good like because they're from before the 2000s so they're really good uh, markers of american history that's right and uh even though that that was a stripper maid the one in clue definitely was not and i think that the uh the stripper maid of course you know all stereotypes all things based on other things are in some way rooted in truth uh for them to be consistent with reality so for the stripper maid to work as a sexy thing it has to be based on real maids Mm -hmm. um Mm -hmm. so that definitely comes from somewhere and I see these signs for Polish maids all over the place, but they're just like very, they're black and white signs with no pictures of sexy ladies on them, which makes me very unlikely to hire maid services. What if they come with a uh, Polish sausage, though? Well, no, I don't want a male maid. <laughs> Is that like a mailman? I meant actual Polish sausage. Like <laughs> she comes in to do the work, and I mean it could be a male maid too. These Polish maids, I don't know how they they roll. come in to do the work, but they also like cook you up a nice rich beef sausage, like Hell a yeah. like a good Hell meal, yeah. or even bring it in cold with like some mayo and a toothpick. <laughs> can I tell you guys what I think maid services are missing nowadays? Please do. Yes, please. And how we can improve them? <sighs> Artificial intelligence. Now I know it's scary. There's a lot of, of things in the media about how robots are going to be scary. But I think if a maid knows exactly uh, where, what you want cleaned and, and how hard that they will come in, they'll do the job and they'll be gone. You won't have to interact with a human being. I think it's ideal. It's, it's ideal. Get a Roomba. For sure. And it avoids these weird uh, sexual dynamics that you guys seem to be interested in. Now well, it's not that we're interested in them. It's just it's it's historical. Mm-hmm, we're mm-hmm. just trying to preserve culture. Oh, it's kind of like colonial Williamsburg. You'll have like women <laughs> kind of uh, acting in the role of a Victorian lady upstairs, downstairs, that kind of thing. So that's it. We can transition housekeeping staffs over to being uh, fully licensed and insured sex workers. Mm-hmm. Well, and then once once we legalize sex work, we can we can regulate it and protect the sex workers in a better. And as a, as a very legitimate comment on that, like we can, if we legalize it, regulate it. That's what we need to do with maids. Legalize maids. I feel like this is too terrifyingly close to Trump's future. That's why they, oh, no one's house is clean because we banned maids. This is so dumb. I knew oh, this. Oh, shit. Man. No, I mean, we banned maids and that's why we have like people of different cultures doing all the work like you rarely see an american maid oh i see where you're going with this so it's it's that's why maids are often paid under the table they're not paid enough and so beyond legalizing sex work we should legalize maids so maids can get paid more 
I think that's really, really huge. I think I think actually, though, the market should dictate their pay. I think we should actually go back to like a Gilded Age style of maid service. Where we cover all the maids in gold. They're almost our property. Like if we fire them, they have to like, they have very few options. And that way we can keep them in our homes uh, at mm-hmm. a very low wage and uh, competitive rates so we can get rid of him anytime we want. Man, I love Trump's America. I mean, it's good. It's a good time. Um, I think we solved this issue. I don't know what we did to maids, but it's not good. <laughs> it's not <laughs> great. Was... What prompt even was this? <laughs> Something was dumb, but it was bad. Keegan, you son of a bitch. <laughs> Wait, what did Keegan even send? What are maid services missing nowadays and how can we improve them? I Honestly, guys, the answer was jetpacks all along. We just didn't want to go with the obvious answer. I mean, so we got weird. You mentioned artificial intelligence, but like, I feel like the, the all the intelligence maids are displaying must be artificial because they would have a better job otherwise. Hey, Jesus. Oh God. <laughs> oh my this God. Is this libertarian future that we're satirizing is very scary. I, I actually have a legitimate sort of suggestion for maids. Thank God mm-hmm. somebody has one. So my parents used to hire maids, and they don't anymore because they stopped doing the thing where they would wipe down the floor, um, like with like a rag. And now my dad has to do it, and he has arthritis, and it's not good for him. They used just a Swifter, and it didn't do a very good job. So they were like, okay, we might as well just do this ourselves. But now it really hurts my dad every time that happens. So I would suggest keep doing that. Well, so maids for now for multiple reasons, I think when they come over, they should bring knee pads. Yes. That's a good point. And, and tell your dad now you can uh, you can go out on like a snowy afternoon and find uh, a guy like looking for someone to buy a child. And you can just put him on floor wiping duty. Pretty much 10 hours a day. Well, they're so close to the ground. Yeah, yeah. They're so good. And cr- cleaning under the stove, that's a really hard spot to hit. I, I go find a I go find a man that wants to buy a child and have him wipe down my house? No, he's selling the children. Oh, he works I buy at the a orphanage. Child. Okay. Yes. A slave. Okay. Got it. Yes. Jeff Bezos <laughs> tables new cost-cutting idea after realizing it just slaves. <laughs> That's the onion. I can't take credit for that, but fuck, it's funny. <laughs> it is. That is awful. Except the thing in real life is Jeff Bezos just goes ahead with it. He just does it. Okay, so just so our listeners know, I am a uh, democratic socialist. And so what I would like to see in the future, if we're being honest, is a, a future where corporate heads and uh, titans of industry and, and wealthy uh, patrons are made to act as uh, maintenance helpers to artificial intelligence housekeeping droids. And uh, and it should be a gross, ugly job. They should have to get on their knees a lot. And if we're still in a weird dystopian future where people force their maids to commit sex acts, at least they're former assholes. So we got that covered. Excellent. That's fair. Yeah, no, they, they used to have assholes, but now they're plugged. Aiden, can I get a prompt? <laughs> um, the last prompt that I want to do is I want to do a prompt from Bradley, and it is the um, the type of music that nobody likes. Actually, we'll do that later, because I want to <laughs> talk about what would happen if you plugged in a modern-day microwave in 1920. It would just work. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think it would just work, Bradley. Good job. But what would that result in? How would that affect, like, the Oppenheimer project, you know, or whatever the fuck? They had they had um, microwaves when Robert Oppenheimer was around. Okay, well, fuck that. Let's go even further back. How would that affect the plot of Big Bang Theory? No, why did I say Big Bang Theory? What's the one with the roaring 20s and the green light? You, Great Gatsby. I don't know Big why Bang I thought theory? that was the... <laughs> Great Gatsby. Yes, the Great Bang Theory. <laughs> I don't know how I got from... Great Gatsby to Big Bang Theory, but th- that was just what I said. It's great and big, and then you got Gatsby and Bang Theory. So kind of the same, I guess. Yeah. Also, I'd like to recorrect. Um, I believe the microwave was invented and distributed shortly after World War II. Yes. Uh, American engineer Percy Spencer uh, is generally credited, this is from Wikipedia, with inventing the modern microwave oven after World War II from radar technology developed during the war. Hell yeah. So we have the Germans oh, cool. and the Japanese to thank for the microwave. I believe the microwave was actually put um, was actually put on the market after the vibrator. 
Wow. Well, the, that is actually true. Yeah, there were the tons home use of vibrators. vibrator was like one of the first ten products to be um, mass produced as an electronic product. Uh, the first ten electronic products to be like mass produced and put in the home. That's delightful. It was originally conceived in the 1880s, um, and it was put out definitely before the uh, the before the microwave. So those are just some fun microwave history facts. Now, how would the Big Bang Theory change if it was in Great Gatsby times? Oh, well, I'll I'll tell you guys. First of all, time travel is real, and okay. Okay. Second of all, we brought the microwave back to the 1920s, and we were basically treated like gods. Um, there wasn't anything the microwave couldn't do. It it ran cars. It what it is this? A lunchable? Made lunchables. It, it all kinds of stuff. The only problem was the plug didn't match the wall, and so it had to have this whole weird Rube Goldberg operation coming out the back. Uh, mm-hmm. Thomas Edison got his hands on it. Then it was used in like secret uh, missions to Mars and the moon. And pretty much rich people all live on the moon now. And the poor are, are like kind of slaves and robot maintenance people. So how does that how does that connect to Big Bang Theory? Aiden, we, mm, Aiden that I, show doesn't exist. Anymore. I do want to say we have done Big Bang Theory in the 1800s before. <laughs> this is a prompt. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we've addressed which is kind of funny because this is a really esoteric one like this is one that's like really unique to us and yet somehow we've managed to stumble around in the blind darkness and find it once more like a long lost friend i love the idea that there's a guy going through time just selling microwave ovens but he's really bad at it okay what is the most dangerous or like a uh, scary place in history to take a microwave uh dinosaur times they wouldn't know what to do with it you just get eaten no electricity. That's a that's a good mm. argument. What if you could bring electricity with you? Batteries. If you could bring electricity with you, I think if you were to bring the microwave back right before the guy who invented the microwave invented the microwave. So he just wouldn't? Now hear me out. So you just bite his rhyme and, well, no, and what, no, live you don't, back then? The, you bring it back there, right? He ne- You patent it, he never invents the microwave, it's your patent, and then you stop producing it, and there are only, like, seven microwaves left in the whole world, and then there's a whole future that, like, revolves around the fact that microwaves are in extremely short supply, and there's an extremely high demand. Whoa. So now there's these microwave wars, and you've changed the whole course of history just by bringing this microwave back and fucking up microwave sales in the future. And also, this one person's life is ruined, because they never make all that money from the microwave. What if you go back and and microwave the guy who made the microwave, so he can't die because he didn't invent it, but you, like, you know. Fuck. Like, like if you went back in time That's and like the... shot John Gunn, inventor of the gun. Um. So, yeah, essentially, if you were to bring back the microwave into the 1920 or really any other time, it would create some sort of dystopian future. Mm-hmm. The only way it wouldn't is if you step on a butterfly and then put it in the microwave. That like yep, corrects all time problems. That's true. All at once. But you don't you put it in, but you do not microwave it. Hmm. So what, you just like duct tape up the microwave, put it in a landfill? And then it's Schrodinger's butterfly. (sighs) Schrodinger's smashed butterfly. Oh, and then if some supervillain from the future gets it out of the landfill, then everything goes back the way it was. Oh my god. Yeah, that seems about right. Hey Jeff, thank you so much for joining (laughs) us. Let's close out the episode. Yes, sir. Oh, it's me. I did this one. All right. It's Bradley. Well, I'm going to do some housekeeping and then we're going to get into our ritual bits that we do at the end of this thing. So let me find the tab. Do I have the tab? I do have the tab. Thank you all so much for listening. It was really good to spend this time with you. If you want to hang out with us again, we have several platforms for you to contact us on. And you can listen to this the same place where you were listening to it before. So here it goes. Our Facebook group is Good Idea Podcast. Our Twitter, Tumblr, and Instagram are all at Good Idea Cast. And our Gmail is Good Idea Podcast at gmail.com. Uh, If you like the show, share it or give us a review or both. We have no advertising budget, so please just spread it through word of mouth. God bless y'all folks. It's been a great time. Also, Bradley, now that you're done with the housekeeping, can you strip for me? Uh, You wouldn't even know, but sure. Well, yeah, just because you're you're, you're doing housekeeping and Uh, there's usually sex acts involved with that. Sock one is off. Oh, okay, wait. If you're only wearing one sock, is it gay? (laughs) (laughs) Or is it bisexual at that point?
Feet have no gender. Thank you. I'm glad you said it. Mm-hmm. I'm glad someone's finally saying that. Uh, Bradley, you want to do the yeah, rest of sure. it? Yeah, sure. Aiden, uh, what was your favorite idea of the episode? You know, I gotta say. Please don't say slaves. <laughs> I wasn't going to say slaves or maids or any of it. I thought that the gods... <laughs> I don't know. Something about God's weakness I really enjoyed. I really liked the... No, you know what? The metric system was my favorite idea of the episode. Excellent, excellent choice. How about you, Jeff? Gosh, uh, I I did love Mario and the whole time shifting. Is it Brittany? Is it the Spice Girls? Uh, Wario. Uh, we went a little off the rails with his ethnic uh, portrayal. <laughs> I think Mario Freaky Fridaying with Britney is probably my favorite idea. I don't think we can take credit for Wario's ethnic portrayal. We had a very good intelligent discussion on the ethnic portrayal of Wario. That's the Japanese. Yes, That's their doing. We can't take credit for that. We cannot take credit for the Japanese is doing. Bradley, you're up. Uh, my favorite idea of the episode uh, was the one we did first that we deleted, so I can't remember what it was. Oh, wait. It's in the chat. I don't I'll think we chat. deleted one. We, I think right off the bat. Oh, I got to send this meme into the chat. I'm sorry, because it's blocking the screen. Oh, it was it was truck ovaries. That's my favorite idea of the episode. The one where you were trying to delete yes. and that you were <laughs> saying we're going to delete it so you could trick me into deleting <laughs> I it. I ended but, up uh-huh. loving it. <laughs> it's funny how things work out that way. All right. Fuck, that's a good meme. <laughs> So the meme I just sent in the chat, which I had meant to send in earlier, but I didn't get around to it, is someone on Facebook's profile picture, which is, like, no one is illegal on stolen land, Scoob. Like, no one is illegal on stolen land, Scoob? And then Scoob goes, <laughs> rock ice. <laughs> so, I, I don't know. I'm not going to espouse political commentary, but I just like the person who put that as the that as their profile picture, because I think it's a, it's a really odd image. My pick of the week is... Definitely the Ben Folds album. Uh, it's an EP that I've been listening to um, as I've walked to class and stuff called Sunny 16. And it's just got some real bops on it. There's a really, really cute song at the end called Songs of Love. Uh, my pick of the week, well, looking for stuff to do for my voice uh, lessons, I encountered a Czech composer called uh, Bohuslav Martinu, I believe is how it's pronounced. I'm not entirely sure. And his one song, which I really like, is uh, Nocturnes 1 through 2. It's on YouTube. Go look it up. Um, So I'm just going to say a microwave. Heck yeah. That's an excellent (laughs) thing. With a cat on top of it. (laughs) Love it. All right. Very, very, very good. Oh, hey, guys. After the microwave was taken back to the 1920s, some really cool companies put out them with, with different names. So we know them as like the Speed Cook the Advantium, Light Wave, Optima Wave. But, the uh, Air they, Fryer. They had some really cool 20s names uh, with these new ones that we have. Optima Wave. That is very cool. Here. Mm. The, the, the Char Olsten with a dash between because it cooks things. That's a good um, one. I like it. Hey, thanks. <laughs> um, so I'm going to real quick. The Fox Rot because it denatures the food inside. Hey, Jeff, do you want to um, plug anything before we end the episode? I, I do. Say. Yeah. yeah. Please go to uh, my, my website. It's awesomepod.squarespace.com. Got information there about uh, all three of my podcasts. And I've got a blog there that I almost never write on. Um, but yeah, you can, you can find everything there. Uh, we're on Twitter. For everything is awesome, it's at EIA Podcast. For Shattered Worlds, it's SWRPG Pod. And for Swear me, pig. for me personally, it's L Hefe Tacoma. Um, I'm actually coming uh, onto Shattered Worlds in a few weeks here. Uh, for an indefinite number of episodes, I'm thoroughly enjoying being on the show. Um, that's how I met Jeff. And you should definitely check out Shattered Worlds. I have not gotten a chance to listen to Everything is Awesome yet because school. But um, Shattered Worlds is an extremely good show, and I'm honored to be coming up on it. So Hell yeah. And if you listen to any uh, McElroy Brothers shows and you're a podcaster, we both met each other at a really cool Facebook page called Mabim Bambino Podcasters. And uh, it's a great community. Lots of collaboration. Heck yeah. Uh, I have to think of one of those things to say, oh, oh, I got it, actually. I'm all good. All right. Uh, that was a good idea. Here are some names of places uh, named after eggs. Overside Easy City. Oh, I messed that one up. Over Easy City. Sunnyside Upville. 
Poached Town, Scrambled Acres. We're done here. Aiden, you know what episode number this was? This episode sixty nine. Yep. Fuck we yeah. Didn't even ah. Oh. Well. Oh man, it's been yeah. great sixty nine and with you guys. It's been a good time. All right.